Statistics and Excel, hypothesis testing, T distribution, one tail upper where the standard deviation of a population is not known. Get ready and some coffee, because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. Here we are. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one, because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our trust me i'm an accountant product line yeah it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep complex and nuanced questions if you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Or in Excel, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells. So you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab the one we will be working on as you can see is blank will construct this from a blank worksheet practicing our excel tools as we build it let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be building looking at an example similar to recent examples except this time we have t distributions rather than normal distributions which we will talk more about shortly but similar in that we want to find information about a large population. We can't test every item within that large population. Therefore, our strategy, as always, take a sample of the population, hoping we can apply the findings found from the sample to the larger population. Two general ways we will typically be doing this, hypothesis testing being one, confidence intervals being the other, Confidence intervals lending themselves to situations where we don't know what that middle point is. Therefore, we're going to take the sample, we're going to take the average of the sample, assume that is the middle point, and then construct our interval around it in some way, shape, or form. However, with the hypothesis testing, we have an idea of what we think that middle point is, and that's what we're going to use to construct our graph around. In this case, we're going to say that we have an average amount of machine hours it takes to produce something. And if we get a new machine, the question is, can it produce it in a more efficient or faster way than the old machine? So that means we already know what the hypothesis will be. The hypothesis will be the old machine's production. And that's what we'll build our graph around. And then when we test the sample of the new machine, we're going to see if the results are far enough away for us to reject the original hypothesis. Now, notice here that we're expecting the new machine to be better. And that's why we're considering purchasing it. So we're not really worried about the tail on the left-hand side. That's why it's going to be an upper tail type of situation. We're trying to say, is the result far enough on the right for us to reject the original hypothesis in order to come to the conclusion that the new machine does produce more efficiently than the old machine, possibly lending to our decision as to whether we should purchase the new machine or not. Now, we also have this situation of... Are we going to be using normal distributions or T distributions? And that depends oftentimes on whether we know what the standard deviation of the population is and possibly the sample size that we are going to be taking. Because if we don't, if we know what the standard deviation of the population is, we can use that to calculate our standard error and get, a, and get our measure of, of the spread of the data. However, if we don't know what the standard deviation of the population is, then especially if we have a smaller sample size, we might say, hey, look, what I would like to do is possibly widen out my bell curve so that I have a little bit larger of a range that I'm going to be dealing with. And to do that, we use T uh, distributions. So they're still going to be a bell-shaped type of curve, but they're typically going to have fatter tails, multiple different T distributions depending 
on uh, the degrees of freedom, which we'll talk about shortly, which is dependent upon the sample size. And uh, But in Excel, Excel automatically kind of pulls the right graph out. So for us, we want to know when do we use T distributions versus normal distributions, possibly when the standard deviation of the population is not known. And if we have a small sample size, then hopefully the actual data tends towards a bell-shaped curve because we can rely less on the central limit theorem uh, resulting in the bell-shaped uh, type of curve. And then uh, given that, what kind of formulas are we going to use and how can we interpret our graph given the T distributions? How are they different than the normal distributions? The T distributions are typically going to have wider tails, fatter tails, uh, which means that there's going to be more data basically in the, in the tail area, which means that when we think about normally in a normal distribution, 95% of the data about is in the middle of two standard deviations you would expect it to be a little bit wider. To get 95% of the data, you would expect to be further out than two standard deviations. Okay, given that, we're gonna to go to the practice tab, which has pre-formatted cells. So you can practice the practice problem by just basically filling out the information with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, though, we're just gonna build this thing from scratch, and that's what will work. First, we're gonna lay down the baseline formatting as we always do, selecting the entire worksheet, right-clicking on the selected area to format those cells. We wanna to go to currency, or I typically go to currency, negative numbers bracketed and red, no dollar sign. We're gonna get rid of the decimals to start off with, adding decimals as needed. Okay, I'm gonna make mine home tab and bold as well, which you might not need to do, but I think it's good to do for a screencast situation. Let's put a header up top. I'm just gonna call this a hypothesis testing. If I spell this wrong, I apologize. It's gonna be T distribution. I'll do the spell check later. One tail upper. And it's T distribution because the STD, standard deviation of the P population, is not known. All right, so let's make this a little bit wider. Let's make this black and white for a header. I'm going to go home tab, font group, making it black and white. All right, and then we're going to say uh, the production, uh, we're going to say, is about... Let's say this is the production of old uh, machine. So this is going to be at 293. So that's how much the current machine uh, that we have uh, the production. Let's say that's the units that are going to that are produced. Okay, and so that's going to be. And then we're going to say that the standard deviation STD of the population. We're going to say it's not known. So we don't, we don't know what the standard deviation of the population is, which is what's going to tend us towards uh, using... Well, I could just delete that. We already said that in the title. And so what's going to be... So the company, from the perspective of the company, the question is, does the new... We're going to call it a widget production machine make more... And we could say more per hour or whatever the time frame is. I'm going to make this one black and white, somewhat of a generic. I'm going to make this uh, orange because that's going to be our color for the given information. So we're going to say that's going to be our kind of our given information. This is going to be kind of our given information. So then the H sub O, which is called the null hypothesis... So we're going to assume the same production level. Now, remember that if we're purchasing a new machine, we're probably saying, I think the new machine is going to produce more like per hour or whatever. That's why I'm considering purchasing it. But I'm going to keep the null hypothesis as if it does not use that as the middle point of our graph and then see whether or not I can reject that hypothesis claiming that it does based on the information which might influence our decision to purchase the machine or not. Double clicking in here, I'm going to select that sub not, sub O, right click on it to make it a subscript, formatting the cells, making it a subscript. Okay, and then okay, and then we'll make this black and white, we'll make this black and white 
I'll make this orange because it's our given data information. And then, so what is going to be the H sub A, which is going to be the alternative hypothesis. Hypothesis. So, so if we reject that one, then we're going to say that it produces more because it's a one tail test. So conclusion, this will be the conclusion if the null hypothesis is rejected, which is that it produces more would be the idea. So if we reject the null, we say the new machine doesn't produce the same amount, it produces more because we're looking at the top half, uh, not the not the bottom, right? I'm not trying to see if it produces less. We, that we wouldn't even consider that, right? We're gonna say it's, it either produces more or not. That what is gonna be affecting our decision. If it produces less, of course, we're not gonna purchase it at all either. So we're looking at the top end. All right, let's make a skinny C. And let's, this is gonna make, let's make the behind the scenes data. So this is what is not known in universe, but I wanna put it in here so we know it, so that we understand what the underlying data is, and then we can see how the sample data actually relates to that underlying data. So we're gonna create the actual pop data, the population mean. I'm gonna say, let's say we're gonna build it based on the idea that it is 300. So our production machine is currently at the 293 and we're going to say that the the population mean of uh the new machine see this is the old machine is going to be 300 but we don't know that in universe that's what we're going to use to construct the population data that we will then take a sample from the standard deviation of the population is going to be we're going to say six all right so then i'm going to make a skinny so let's make take this skinny c make a skinny f we're going to put our data right here so data for the population and to do that i'm going to go to the data tab we're going to go to the analysis if you don't have the analysis the data analysis look look it up check out chat gtp or something and uh, turn it on and so we want to go to the random number generation random number generation one number of random numbers i'm just going to go with our standard 500 just because that's a large enough population for us to be uh, using in the example, but not too large that it takes forever for the thing to generate the numbers. Normal distribution, it's gonna be randomly generated around a normal curve. Remembering that if I'm talking about production levels of something, you would expect to have a normal distribution, which means we should be able to use this method even if we have a fairly small sample, because even if the central limit theorem doesn't kick in, making our curve more of a bell-shaped curve, the data itself should already be tending towards a bell-shaped curve because we're talking about basically error situations in production levels, which tend to be bell-shaped around a center point. So we're gonna say that this is gonna be the mean is going to be 300 and standard deviation is six i want to put it in my worksheet and where do i want to put it right there under the data let's say okay and it should generate that let's see how long it takes sometimes it takes a long time and sometimes not i don't know why that one too bad i just hit pause and then it generated maybe it's my screen recording that makes it a little slower because it has to think let's make this black white and let's center it and let's make this red because this is the behind the scenes red means in our story that in universe they don't know about it but we know about it out unit because we're making the story so we know more than they know in universe so i'm going to say control shift down let's format this thing again because they messed up our formatting so let's say we want to format this thing and we're going to say numbers currency let's make it uh negative and uh no dollar sign and notice it has decimals and so i could say okay let's do that oh wait a sec i didn't want the dollar signs didn't i just say to get rid of the do yeah but you didn't click the right button whatever i told you do what i say not what i do that's what i tell my kids all the i don't have any kids what are you talking about i don't know what i'm talking about that's but do what i say anyways 
I'm going to say, let's make, so now if I want, maybe I want to round it now. So if these numbers don't make sense because they're not rounded, let's go ahead and round them. Uh, and so we have nice even numbers. How do you do that? Equals round tab this number comma to zero places, meaning give me whole numbers, por favor, enter. So if I add some decimals, now they're whole numbers. Notice I can get rid of the decimals here by doing this, but it still has the decimals, right? It's just, you can't see them. Whereas over here, I have rounded them and there are no decimals. So just to, just to note that in that Excel uh, idea. So let's select those two. I'm gonna say control shift down. Let's make this whole thing red and, and bordered and white. I'm gonna make these skinnies a little smaller. I think they could be skinnier. You're still too, you're still too heavy. You're still too wide, F. Lose some, lose some of that added girth, please. Oh my God. You, you treat your Excel cells so poorly. It's too population. Let's do a population count. And then we'll do the pop mean and then the STD of the population. So these were the numbers we used to generate it, but the actual outcomes might be slightly different, right? So what's the population count? The count should be 500, but let's just check it out. Equals count tab of these numbers. Control shift down, control backspace. There's the formula, enter 500. That makes sense. Let's do the mean, which is the average, equals the average of these numbers. Control shift down, control backspace and enter about 300 not exactly though if i add some decimals it's like 299.80 we use 300 to generate it so that makes sense let's do the standard deviation of the population stds how many stds to this population half control shift down control backspace and enter about six but not exactly if i add some decimals i'm sure it's a little bit different but that makes sense so it's pretty close to what we told it Let's actually make a bell-shaped curve of this population. Make a chart to see if it is bell-shaped. Control shift down, it should be, because we told it to generate a bell-shaped type curve around that center point of 300 using a distribution of the six on the standard deviation of the population. So let's go to the insert charts, dropping it down, make a histogram. So it's a little wonky in that middle point, but basically bell-shaped. So we'll go, that's okay, okay. That makes sense. Let's just put this over here just so we have it in case we want to check it out later. I'll just put it over here, make it as large as I can, fit it over there. All right, let's make this red and white and bordered. Red, white, bordered. All right, that's what we know. Now let's get to what we know in universe. We're gonna do a sample and we're gonna do a fairly small sample, only 15, remembering that if we have a small sample, then and we know we don't know the standard deviation of the population that's going to cause us kind of a problem that we might have to go from the the normal distribution to the t distribution which has the fatter tails on them given and uh we might then be more reliant on the idea that our actual data is bell-shaped because the central limit theorem may not kick in as clearly for us so let's go and format paint that over here and let's do our sample. Now, I'm just gonna do a sample. Let's do our count first. How many do I want? Just 15. So we'll say one, two, then I'll, after I buckle my shoe, I'm gonna drag that down to 15. Cause you don't wanna drag, you don't wanna walk all the way down to 15 if your shoe's not buckled. Cause you'll twist your ankle. All right, let's go black, white. Let's make that center. And then we're gonna say that the, uh, the sample, now I could do the sample by just taking the top 15, cause they were already random, or I can put a random number generation next to it and shuffle them like a deck of cards, or I can do a random number generation using the, the index function, which is what I'm gonna do here. So we're gonna say equals index tab of our set of numbers control shift down control backspace and then f4 on the keyboard making it absolute so i can have that same range copy down without a change comma we want a random number generation between 
the between now being the top row and the bottom row of the range selected, which is row one comma to 500 because we made 500 of them. Close it up, close it up and enter. So there we have it. So it took a random number. If I double click it on down, boom, there's our random numbers. It's gonna keep on sh shuffling and jiggling as we as we keep on doing that which used to bother me but now i'm i'm cool with it now i'm i've come uh at peace with it i'm at peace with it now and i'm actually i actually think it's somewhat beneficial let's make this one blue this time because this is what we now know in universe this is the sample we took of the new machine we tested it out we tested it out said let's see what this thing can do let's make this one blue if you don't have that blue it's over here and we'll say boom. All right, and then let's make it uh, bordered. And then this one will be a little smaller and a little smaller. Okay, all right, so that's what we got. Now let's re reiterate our hypothesis in symbols this time. I'm gonna make a skinny, a skinny O by taking the skinny L, format painting it over here in the O. And let's say that we wanna say H sub O, hypothesis colon is that mu which is the mean let's do a fancy mu sign with an insert symbol of a mu if you don't have it it's in the greek and coptic if you've done it before it's over down here and we just go boom there it is and okay then i'm gonna say enter so it doesn't do anything funny like it sometimes does after you enter a symbol go back into it and then go into that O so I can right click on it and format the cell to make it a subscript, subscriptized it. All right, and so we're gonna say that that means that the hypothesis H sub O of mu, the middle point or mean, we're gonna assume is less than or equal to enter the amount that the old machine produces of the 293. Now, again, we assume that that's not the case. We're hoping the machine does better. That's why we're looking at it. But we're going to make the assumption that it produces the same amount as the old machine, as the hypothesis, and see if the evidence is enough for us to reject that hypothesis, which in this case would be good or an argument in favor of possibly taking on the new machine. And then H sub A, the alternative, is going to be the mu or mean of production of the new machine insert and then double and then i'm just gonna i'm not i'm just gonna go into this one subscript it right click format cell subscript fancy formulizations here uh is going to be if it's if it's greater than this amount and we're hoping it actually is greater if we want to buy the new machine which might make our production more efficient and help us to crush the competition uh which is actually a good thing of course it helps everyone when we crush the competition by in with legal means of you know because we make more stuff we make it better than they do we make it better than they do that's a good thing but the so then we're gonna go but you have to you have to pay everyone equally even when they make crappy stuff no no they go out of business because their stuff is lame and we do a better job than they do and that's good good all right anyways we're going to say that n is now going to equal the sample size so let's make this a little bit larger and we'll just do a count of our sample there should be i think we made 15 of them so it equals the count tab of the sample. Control shift down, control backspace. It's already there. I don't have to go back down because backspace because it's there's only 15 of them. There it is, 15. And then we've got then the DF, DF, which is going to be equivalent to the degrees of freedom. Why do we have that? I haven't seen that before because it's specific to the t distribution you don't need it with a normal distribution and all we do is we take then the 15 minus the number of samples which in this case is only one therefore it's going to be 14 that tells us 
how fat the tails are going to be on the T distribution because there's actually different T distribution graphs based on the degrees of freedom, which is basically based on, of course, the sample size, smaller samples having fatter tails. All right. So the X bar, which is going to be the sample mean, remembering that the sample mean is going to tend towards the population mean, which would also tend towards the mean if we imagined every possible sample combination of 15 out of the population of 500. So we're just going to say this equals the average or mean of the sample. Boom. Average comes out to 299. We could add some decimals. And so the actual middle point is 299.80. So this is 298.80. That's pretty darn close. Pretty dang close. It's going to keep shuffling around, of course. There's 302, to, right? Because I, our data is shuffling around, but there we have it. All right. And then the alpha, we're going to say alpha, which we've been setting to the default is often five. We're going to set it this time to 0.03 instead of the five that we've been working with, that's somewhat arbitrary, remembering that a, a lower alpha means we're gonna be more confident, right? And so, and so now we're gonna say that we want a, the, the, uh, uh, we want this SE for the standard error, standard error. Now the standard error, do I have a formula for that? I believe I do. I believe I do. It's right there. There's our formula. Let's pull that over. Let's pull that over here. So it's in our worksheet. So <clears throat> the standard error formula. If, now I know I cheated. If you want to type that formula in, you could go to insert equation and then ink equation, I think is the easiest way. And then type in the formula down here and it writes it up top, but whatever. So then, so now I'm going to drop the end bit and I'm going to just take this part of the formula remembering that the standard deviation we have the standard deviation of the population which we don't know we have the standard deviation of the sample which we um which we can take and approximate the standard deviation of the population with uh but but we also want to be thinking of the standard deviation of all possible combinations of sample size in this case of 15 because that's the thing that's more likely to tend towards a bell-shaped curve due to the central limit theorem. So our formula is the same as we've seen before, but instead of the standard deviation up top, which was sigma indicating standard deviation of the population, we don't know it, we have to replace it with what we do know, standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of n, n being the sample size. In our case, it was a 15, I believe. So let's go back on over here now to do this though i first need the standard deviation of the sample so let's do that first i'm going to pull this down std of the sample is going to be equal to the std of the sample how many stds does this sample got control shift down enter five let's add some decimals let's decimalize it for a little bit more specificity and then we can do our calculation here. So now we're going to say this is going to be equal to the standard deviation of the sample because we in, in universe don't know the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size, which is 15, which is totally misspelled. My goodness. SD stand sample size. All right, let's decimalize this one. Decimalize to recognize. And then we're going to say that we have now the T, which is our test statistic. So meaning now uh, you will recall that the, 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 what we hypothesized is that the new machine has an average production of 293 equivalent to the old machine. So when we construct our bell curve or T distribution curve, we're using this as the center point. And we want to compare the result we got from the sample to see how far away it is from uh, the center point, which we can measure basically in Z scores if it was a normal distribution. But this time we measure it in T scores which are in standard deviations on the T distribution, right? So similar kind of concept. How do we do that? We take, here's our middle point minus 
what we hypothesized divided by the standard deviation, which in this case is the standard deviation or the standard error, because that's what we're gonna to use to create our bell curve. And that comes out to, if I add some decimals, decimalize it a 4.016 on the t-test so that's pretty pretty far away if it was a if it was a normal uh if it was a normal distribution because two standard deviations has like 95 percent although it would be a little bit wider with the t distributions but not too much wider uh because the there's more fatter tails on the t distributions all right well given that then uh, let's take a look at our p-value, p-value. Uh, so the p-value is going to be, this is going to be equal to, and I have to take one, this is going to be one minus the t dot dist, one minus t dot dist of uh, x, which now is going to be that, that t, which is a little bit confusing to think about, but then comma, degrees of freedom, not the sample size, but the degrees of freedom, which is basically the sample size minus the number of samples, which is one comma. Do we want it to be cumulative? We do. So I'm going to put then a one there and enter. It's going to close it up. So we'll close it up. Let's add some decimals, decimalize it and boom. So let's bring it out quite a bit here. So that's going to be uh, the, 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 the p distribution on the upper end that's why we needed to say one minus because we want we want the point on the upper side which we'll see more clearly once we get to uh once we get to the the graph just to just to comparison let's say this is the p value uh if it when we use a t distribution Let's do the similar thing over here and say, well, what if I had a normal distribution p value? And if I was using the norm.dist, then what would that look like? It would be equal to one minus norm.s.dist tab. And then we're going to take the Z, which would be the test statistic, which would be the Z, same calculation for the test statistic, whether it's T uh, or Z, basically, and then comma we would want then it to be cumulative, which would be one and close it up, adding decimalizing it, decimalizing it. And you could see uh, the difference between the T distribution and the norm distribution there, which, which we'll get into possibly more when we get, when we graph this thing out and we can kind of visualize it. So, but we can also calculate the critical value for the, Let's do the t, uh, t dist, and then we'll do the same with the norm again, so we can kind of compare and contrast it as well. This will be equal to, we're going to say this is going to be the t dot inverse tab. And once again, I have to take one minus looking at the probability. The probability is going to be the alpha in our case, the 0.03 and then comma degrees of freedom is the sample size minus the number of samples, which is 14, 15 minus one and enter adding some decimals. Boom, boom, boom. Let's bring it out to the same decimal spot. And then, and then we can look at it for the norm dot dis. So this would be the critical value if I was looking at the norm dot dis this is going to be that one and so we can say this would be equal to the norm dot s dot inverse of one minus once again the alpha closing it up enter adding some decimals doot, 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 doot. and that's going to give us the critical value meaning we're measuring that upper value the clearing value that we would have to get past uh, in order for us to reject. So, so that means that we're comparing this number to basically this number. And if this number clears or goes past, goes to the, to the right of this value, then we might have the evidence to reject the hypothesis 
of the new machine averaging 293 in this case the same as the old machine which means that it would produce possibly more or that would be the evidence of the test right which is the case here so and and, and again it might as we shuffle around these numbers will change but the the p distribution is saying if this number is less than the three percent because we're, me we're measuring the area of the small bit of the graph on the far right corner and saying if that is smaller it's the area of it is going to be smaller if this critical value if we've passed this critical value so we can do a logic test and say okay well this says if then if this number is less than this number then what do we want to do we want to quote reject uh and then if not comma what do we do quote no reject okay and then so it's gonna it's gonna reject it and then down here we're gonna say uh if 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 tab if this number is less than uh is less than this number then what do you want us to, uh to do because if this number is greater that's when we reject so if this number is less we're going to say then what do we want to do <laughs> let's do it the other way i actually think about it the other way if this number is greater than this number then we want to reject end quote comma if not quote no reject or let's just say no reject something like that enter so both of them are uh are rejecting which i think makes sense so let's go ahead and say conditional formatting if it's equal to if this cell says reject let's make it red and then i'll take that conditional formatting and put it here as well so then it turns red when we reject it all right let's make this border blue border blue let's make that border blue just to make it look pretty and have the calm blue ocean color calming us down after the harsh red on the left because we're we're now we're feeling better that we got things under control okay let's plot this thing out now so i'm going to make a skinny w let's take this skinny s home tab format paint make a skinny w w and let's say that we're going to have t's which are kind of equivalent to z's and once again i'm going to go four standard deviations out which although the t's are fatter in the tails should encompass most of the data so i'm going to say negative four negative 3.99 and then let's add some decimals to those and i'm going to copy it down till i get to a positive four copying it down copy that roger roger out roger is out all right there it is okay and then we're going to say based on that we can calculate the x because this is how many standard deviations it x is away from the middle point so we're going to say this is going to be equal to the standard deviations which we're going to be using to build our graph the standard error not the standard deviation of the population because it's not no not the standard deviation of the sample because that's not what we use to do the bell curve because we want to have the central limit theorem kick in if possible so we're going to use this one and then we're going to say that's going to be that times four or negative four and then we're going to say there gives us that uh plus the middle point so it's going to be this negative number plus the middle point not the middle point that we got on the sample but the hypothesized middle point that's what we're going to use for the graph enter there we have it if i go back into it when i copy that down i only the only one i don't want the only one i don't want frozen is the one in x so the other two this one i want to put f4 so it'll be the same number and this one f4 dollar sign before the letters and the numbers so that x2 is the only one that's going to be moving down to x3 x4 x5 and so on enter and then we'll double click it down but boom 
And then we're going to say this is going to be P of X, which now we're going to be using the uh, T distributions to do. So this is going to be equal to T dot dist. And then the X, which is a little wonky, is going to be that T. And then I'm going to say comma, the degrees of freedom are going to be the 14. And then comma, do we want it to be cumulative? No. So therefore, zero, close it up. I want this degrees of freedom in U2 to be absolute. So put our cursor in there. Don't change U2. We like YouTube. So when you when you copy U2 down, you keep it the same. We're going to put percentify, add some decimals to recognize, and then double click the fill handle button, copying it down. All right, let's see what that does. Let's make this black, white headers. Do, do, do black white center and let's go ahead and graph or graphize this and see if it looks proper control shift down on the p of x control backspace insert we're going to go to our good old charts let's make an area graph to do the fanciest chart so we're going to say i want the area graph por favor that's the one let's do that one that's the coolest one we're going to take that one and then let's change the X's down here. So I'm going to go to the data. X's need to be changed to that. Control shift down, control backspace. It's not showing up yet. So I'm going to select here. Boom, boom. I can see it's showing up. Cool. Got that. Okay. And then uh, I would like to add the tail on it on the right hand side. So I'm going to need another set of data. And then I also want to add the T scores on the bottom. So what I'm going to do to, to do that is I'm going to say everything above the critical value of the 2.046. So I'm going to say this is going to be uh, uh, when the T is greater than this number right there. Uh, oh, wait a sec. But I can't do that, right? So I have to say when T is greater than, and I have to say that I'm going to say this is equal when t is greater than this number here that number boom but it doesn't like it because i have to go back in there and say i need this to be quotes because that's going to be a text this needs to be quotes because it's a text and then tie it with an and function or an and symbol and then there it is but now it's not now it's not rounded let's go back into it i want to round it now let's put a round in front of that tab Round it to how many decimals? Eh, it's got like two decimals, maybe. I feel like that would work. There we go. Okay, so then we're going to go home tab, font group, black, white, center it. And then I'm going to use an if function to, to do this formula. So let's make this a small t. Small t. Okay. So this is going to be equal to if tab, this t number right here. If that is greater than uh, this number, absolute reference, because I want us to keep that number the same as we go down, F4 on the keyboard, then what do you want us to do? We want you to pick up that number. And then comma, what if it's, what if it's not true? Then leave it blank. But how do I know to leave it blank? We'll, we'll put a space there. So you know it's quote, space, quote, space. Enter, and then we're going to go... Then we're going to go make that a percent, add some decimal, double click the fill handle, check if it's doing what we think it should. If we go down, there it is. It starts showing up down there. It looks like it's doing the right thing. Let's graph it and check it out graphing wise so we get a visual representation. We can see if it's doing the thing that we want it to be doing. Chart, let's add the data, add a new data set. That's going to be the name of it. And we'll pick up the series on this here. Control shift down, control backspace. And it's not showing up over here. So I'm going to say click that, click that. There it shows up. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, okay. There it is. Now, what did it do? It added that little orange bit that looks about right. That looks like we what we want. Let's double click on it now. I want to add a secondary axis close it up but it puts it on the right that's not where i want it you messed the whole thing up excel stop doing that stop doing that stop it and then we're going to go data secondary axis 
changing the secondary to the T's, which are equivalent to the Z's, but they're T's this time. So we'll go back up and then I'm going to say click here, click here so it shows up. Doo -doo -doo -doo. That looks good. Okay. But it's still not showing up over here possibly because I have to say plus axes and add the secondary horizontal and there it is but it put it at the top and i don't like it at the top so i'm going to go to the options select that one make sure that one's selected labels put it at the bottom por favor you know how i like it excel you know how i like it stop doing what you want to do and think about me for crying out loud why don't you don't put it at the top that's what you like that's how you like it but that's not what you know that I don't like that. Put it at the bottom. That's what I'm telling it. So then I'm going to say then. So now we could say that the middle point in T's is, of course, at the double zero. We built the graph around the hypothesis, which was the average of the old machine at the 293 to so 293. And then we said given the confidence interval of 0.03 how far out can it be for us to reject it so we said that the point uh, of the rejection would be at the 2.04 far out so right 2.04 which is about here right 2.9 2.04 so if it clears past this point we reject it now note that the one tail is a little bit confusing because first of all Oftentimes we use a 5%, which would be 95% on a two tail if it was in the middle. So oftentimes we think about a two tail, 95% in the middle if it was a normal distribution, which means that you would have 95% within two standard deviations, which means that each side of these tails would have uh, five divided by two or 2.5%. But in this case, even if we have that same distribution, it's not going to include 95% in the middle because we're using T distributions, which have fatter tails, which means to include 95%, we would have to have a wider amount than, than, than two standard deviations, right? And then we didn't use five and 95%, right? We used three. So, so now we're saying we used the, uh, the, the, the 0.03 and the 0.03 is not being distributed between the two ends over here but rather it's all on one side because we're looking at the tail to the right i'm not concerned if it's producing less that doesn't affect our decision it only affects our decision if the machine is producing substantially more so that's why the whole three percent is basically on the right side of the tail and then this number right here, the, the T distribution is the area of, of, you know, this bit basically up top, right? So it's the area of that bit. And this is, this is the T test. That is where our point actually is in the sample, which is at the 5.18. So that's way, that's way out there. Let's, let's shuffle this around a bit. Duh, 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 duh. So let's, let's get one that's a little bit uh, three point. I should have kept that three. Here's that 2.8, right? So 2.8 would be like, that's not too far past our zone because we said it was at, so right now the critical value is two and it's at 2.8. So which isn't too far past, but it is past the zone and therefore it would be over here. And therefore the area of the bit that we're looking at is going to be less than the area of the bit at that default point, which is what the p value is as we compare it, uh, as we compare it to the alpha, right? And that, and so and then also note that the p value of the normal distribution is is going to be less because the p value is calculating uh, is calculating this side of the graph, right? is calculating this little corner over here so the area the area of the upper side of the graph if you were talking about a normal distribution would be thinner because the normal distribution has a thinner tail 
And so if you're talking about a T distribution with the fatter tails, you can kind of see the difference. It would be a similar calculation with a normal distribution, but you have a higher T distribution on the P value of that outer bit because of the shape of the T distributions, which look similar, but have a fatter tail. And then if you look at the critical value here on the T distribution versus the normal distribution, the T distribution is out further around two, whereas the normal distribution is at the 1.88. Uh, Again, because with the T distribution, you'd have to go further out because of the wider, the fatter tails on the T distribution. So I think that looks like uh, correct, normal. And so we'd say that we conclude that, that uh, the new machine does look like it's producing not a whole lot more possibly, but more than the old machine. So if we want to crush the competition, then no mercy, no mercy, the competition will be destroyed. But then they, <laughs> all right, we're going to say, so we'll do that. Okay, that's it. So that's where we're at.